It's the epochs of God. And, uh, you know, it is a very important word. It is a word that I believe is in season. And that Christians, if they can catch this word, it is very important. Listen, we are in a season and an epoch that is very dangerous. We are in a season of betrayal. Uh, where there's much betrayal in the body of Christ, you will see many people, many believers' hearts that will fail them. You'll see many people whose faith will fail them. They will betray one another. They will take one another to courts. They will go and sue one another. Uh, we're not speaking of not suing out of a, you know, in a business. A lot of people think in the church, if we say don't sue, that uh, you can't protect yourself or you can't, as a business, do legals. We're not speaking of that. We're speaking of taking brother to brother to court over a dispute that could have been settled within the church. That is what the scripture is saying. It says, don't take your dispute that could be settled within the leadership of the church to a worldly judge and for him to bring a conclusion. And these things, the love of many will grow cold. The faith of many will be lost. Why? Because of a thing called the spirit of fear. We are in the last of the last days, meaning that uh, these things and the spirit is coming in. It will come in the name of compliance. You know, many has threatened us just with running our church. Many has threatened us when we were just broadcasting. I remember when we were at our house in the first lockdown and we were broadcasting from there. People tried to phone the police. People threatened us. Whatever they were thinking, we were breaking the law or not. Listen, we have every right to broadcast and run our business such as this. And many has threatened. And all I'm saying is go and do it and do it very quickly. Because... Uh, you know, it is, uh, it is uh, if they have to arrest us, they'll have to pull me down from here. And then this will, they will not do it. It, is, it, will, it, will, go, it will get too much media attention. And, uh, you know, we are not living in a draconian or tyrannical rule like we're not supposed to. And uh, with the threats that comes, and, and these are people whose hearts are failing them. We've had people leaving the church because they uh, say that, uh, you know, how dare we lie to the government? In what way have we lied to the government? We say exactly from here what we are doing. We say the church is open before now for the few weeks that we close it by which over the presence. Before that, we say the church is open. We say we lay hands on you. We say we, uh, we say everything from the pulpit. So there's no lying going on. Uh, is there disobedience or, or obedience? That is for us to know, for our conscience before God. Because submission is not the same as obedience. You can submit, but it doesn't mean you have to obey. And everybody that says, you know, but God put in Cyril, God put in, yes, he, no authority goes in with allow God putting them in. But it doesn't mean God approves of them. Number one, it doesn't mean that you blindly follow against your faith. It is casting your faith aside. Are you guys with me? I can tell you now, if this thing has to get worse, you'll see 80% of the church, hearts fail them. You'll see pastors who will give up their faith. And they'll do it in the name of compliance. There are churches that are opening up these churches for uh, uh, vaccination centers right now are you guys with me i thank god that this building is not owned by charity so they cannot do anything with us here this building is not owned by section 18a it's not owned by tax exempt it's not owned by charity they cannot touch it because that's what the government wants to do. They want to say, okay, no, no, no. You know, because you are tax exempt, you have to do one, two, three. We have to use it. And there are many mega churches that don't have a choice. They must use their buildings now for vaccination centers. Isn't it amazing? The system in the world that we have gone into. And uh, 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 I'm just giving you our opinion. I'm not saying that you're not allowed to do this or to do that. Remember, as I say, the vaccine is not the mark of the beast we've said it since last year we have done a great teaching on it but i have not i do not say that it is not the system of the beast it is an introduction and it is a setting up for the system that is coming into play but it according to scripture is not the mark that should be your own conscience in whether you want to do that or not but we are here to address the spirit of fear 
I'm here to say that if there are people that are following us, if there are people that are in encounter, or people that are from far away that are following encounter, watching encounter, that are saying, I will not let my courage down. I will not let my boldness down. Meaning that I'll stand in faith. Doesn't matter what the devil is doing. Doesn't matter what the devil is doing through the government. Doesn't matter what he's doing through government officials. It doesn't matter what draconian rules is coming in. I know what is right from wrong. There's nothing wrong in worshiping God. And I even will go as far as to say that there's nothing wrong in gathering together and worshiping God. Am I saying that we are doing it? No. I'm saying there's nothing wrong in it. According to scripture, you are allowed to disobey government and obey God in that retrospect. And if you don't, your conscience is the thing that is, you know, you must do what your conscience is saying, but there's one thing that is higher than our conscience. And that is the word of God. Where Peter said in the book of Acts, we will obey God. Whether you think that is disobedient to you or not, you choose. But we choose to obey God. Why was Paul in prison? Everybody's Romans 13, Romans 13, Romans 13. Why is he in prison? He disobeyed government. He broke compliance. Are you guys with me? Let me tell you, there's a definitive line, a threshold that is going to separate believers, Christians, not non-Christians and Christians, Christians in South Africa from those who are cowardly and those who are bold. Those who have no, who are intimidated, full of fear, who have bowed their knee to the system of the beast. And those who are saying, I have my rights, I have my freedom, and I will worship God, meaning as Daniel and his three friends, and his three friends, Daniel's friends, as they said, we will not bow our knee to Baal. Even if you put us in the fire, we will not worship the system. We will be disobedient in your eyes, but we will be obedient in the eyes of God. And South Africa has become weak in nature. South Africa's, trust me, they've become weak. The Christians in South Africa, oh my God. It is something to be embarrassed and ashamed about. That you would cast off your faith so quickly. We are not even speaking about uh, persecution. We're speaking just simple compliance. Do you think this is going to stop next month? Do you think the president is going to come up tonight and say everything is done? In your dreams. And please, I'm not a false prophet if I say this is going to go on for so long and so long. It's reality. I'll tell you who will die. I'll tell you what will happen in government and where the split will come in and how it will happen and the unknown disease that is going to come in. And I'll tell you as the church to pray against that, that it is not God's will. But God is the one who raises kings and God is the one who puts down kings. Not governments, not the Illuminati, not even the family of the 13 or those who are in power or China or nothing of that. It is God who raises kings and it is God who puts down kings. And you'll see that those who are in corruption will begin to be confused and not even know what they are doing. And in doing so, they're going to expose themselves. Say with me, deliverance of the mind. I want us to get into it. It'll be a short word, 30 minutes, so that uh, you can get home and listen to our family meeting. And, uh, uh, you know, I don't think there's any country that calls it a family meeting except ours. So uh, say, with me the, say with me, deliverance of the mind. I want us to touch on something called imagination. A lot of people, when they think that I'm thinking of deliverance of the mind, I'm speaking of strongholds and this and that. There's a greater realm that Christians has put aside. Some that judge and criticize the power of imagination. I want you to listen to this. Go through to Matthew 22 verse 37. Matthew 22 verse 37. Listen to this. Matthew 22 verse 37. Jesus said to him, 
You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Say with me, with all your mind. Luke chapter, Luke 10 verse 27. And just flow with me now, please, with the music, not like it was last week. Luke 10 verse 27. So he answered and said this, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. Say with you, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and say with you, with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. Now listen, when the Bible is speaking of mind, all we think of is mind. Yet it doesn't mean that because there's a variety of different Greek words and Hebrew, uh, Hebrew words for the word mind. And when we read it here, it is the word in the Greek dia noai, dia noai, d-i-a, dia, which means to pierce and to go through, dia, and then noai, n-o-i-a, dia noai. Are you guys with me? Dia noai. This is the Greek word, so it reads like this. For example, uh, Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your dionai. Luke 27, with all your dionai. The word dionai does not mean mind as we know it. It means imagination. Now your mind is broken up in two parts. Are you guys with me? I'm not speaking of the brain, I'm speaking of the mind. It is broken up in two parts. You have what we call dionai, which is the imagination. And then you have another side, which is called dialogismos, or dialogisnoi, which is rational and analytical thinking. So when you sit and you think, can I afford the score or not? Let's, uh, yes, I, that is dialogismos. Are you guys with me? Dionai is I'm sitting and I'm imagining myself driving a car I can't afford. And that imagination becomes so real that I can form it and shape it in my mind. Jesus didn't say we must serve Him with our dialogismos. He said we must serve Him with our dionai. Meaning what is our imagination set upon? What is the thing that we are pondering every single day? What is the thought? That is, that is uh, taking thought. Let me just get a verse here. Uh, mm. Go with me to Philippians. Let me see where I can have it. Mm. So listen to this. Philippians chapter number 2 verse 5. Let this mind be in you. Let's go to uh, Philippians. Let me, let me look. I'm looking for another one. I'm looking for another one. Zoronon. Uh, I'll pick quickly where to find. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything. In prayer and supplication. Dun. Verse 6, Philip 4, verse 6. Listen to this. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Are you guys with me? So when we read the word mind, we don't fully understand what is happening or what the Bible is saying. The mind is cut in two parts, imagination and rational thinking. 
You have dialogismos, rational thinking, and then you have dionai, which is imagination. Are you guys with me? And God is saying, I want you to worship me. I want you to serve me in all of your dionai. Go there to Luke 1 verse 51. Luke 1 verse 51. Listen to this. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imaginations of their hearts. In the imaginations of their hearts. Are you guys with me? Hear the word imagination. Some translations will say in the intent of their heart. But it is not the right word. Uh, it's supposed to be imaginations of their heart. In the DNI of their heart. But now if we would read it in our English today, we would might read in the mind of their heart. And it doesn't make sense. That's why I'm saying mind is not here. Your mind is here. In the imaginations of your heart. Are you guys with me? As heart is a physical organ that beats and gives rhythm to your body, so it is a spiritual organ that beats and gives rhythm to your spiritual life. Meaning that is why God is after your heart. Once your heart is right with God, everything in your spiritual life beats within rhythm and you're moving with a momentum and you're moving with a rhythm you can easily spot if somebody's heart is not light why once their spiritual heart is not right everything in their life is falling apart the condition of your life is directly related to the condition of your heart are you guys with me the condition of your life is directly related to the condition of your heart so you're at Luke 9 46. Luke 9 46. Listen to this. Then a dispute arose among them as to which of them would be the greatest. And Jesus, perceiving the thoughts of their hearts, so with the thoughts. Of their hearts he took a little child and set him by him the word thought there is logis uh, 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 uh. you have dialogue you have you have you have uh, you have dionai then you have dialogismo and the word here is what we call logismi it is without the dia it just depends in what tense it is used this is reasoning it's the opposite side, meaning he was listening to their thoughts. Are you guys with me? He was listening to their logismi. So in the Greek, you get the word dia. If you put the dia in front of dialogisma, it means to press through. Uh, dia means to go through something. It is just a really a verb. But go through to 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4. And I'm going to get to a point. I want those who are online, I want you to catch this. 2 Corinthians chapter number 10 verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God. For pulling down strongholds. Follow with me guys. Casting down arguments. Put in the King James Version here. I want to show you something. Casting down, say with me, imaginations. It is a wrong translation. It should not say imaginations. The word there is not dionai for imaginations, but the word there is dialogismo. Are you guys with me? Or logismai. It is the Greek word for reasoning. So what it's actually saying is casting down your dialogismos, your ability to keep reasoning against the miracle working power of God and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ are you guys with me? just not too rough with the drums there's no rhythm or anything just just flow with me please guys just flow with me can they hear me okay just not too rough because it's like now the guys are just playing hard. Just flow. Understand? Please understand what it is to connect in your heart. And if you cannot, the, you, you, you know, uh, 
uh, it, it cannot be done rationally. Just please flow. Say with the dialogismo. So, 2 Corinthians 10, casting down imaginations. Casting down dialogismo. And we think in our uh, religious way that we've been brought up, that no, 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 anything we just imagine is wrong. While our imagination has been given by God to us. Imagination is one of the greatest keys to the prophetic. Please, I do not say the office of a prophet. I say to the prophetic. Imagination is one of the greatest keys given to a believer. To have a creativity. Meaning it is creativity that makes a person rich. That makes a person prosper. It was creativity and imagination that made Walt Disney see Disney World before it was there. Are you guys with me? It is the imagination that allows inventors to imagine something that has not yet been created. Imagination is the very essence and evidence that there's a world that is beyond this world. It is the evidence that there is a creator out there. Because if we can create and invent, someone had to create and invent us. Are you guys with me? And I'll show you how imagination is in the very first two verses of Scripture in the book of Genesis. How God's imagination was which brought you into this world. How Jesus went past the cross and endured the cross because of his imagination. Christians without an imagination are dead. Are you guys with me? When I'm with staff or when, I'm, when I see that somebody has no creativity, they're just doing just like they are told, you know, like a robot. It means there's no relationship with God. Nothing. Some Christians throw their mind out, their imagination out, and they just become yes and no, yes and no. Jump how high, yes, there, no, so this, and, uh, and, and doesn't matter if the whole situation changes, they just do the same. They become what we call going through the motions. There's no heart. Like the word is saying, you stutter with your lips, but there's no heart. You speak and you do all these things, but there's no heart, Isaiah said. Are you guys with me? Imagination is one of the greatest tools that the enemy used for unbelievers to become rich and successful. And it is the greatest trick in the Bible that the enemy used to say it is evil for believers and to keep them in their poverty. When we say deliverance of your mind, I am not speaking of strongholds. I'm speaking of a lack of imagination that keeps Christians in their poverty. Are you guys with me? That keeps Christians poor. For somebody just to sit on a couch their whole life, or for one year, we, I remember, we, we knew this person that was supposedly rich and hundreds of millions, uh, or they were going to get it and so on. And, uh, 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 and, and they were going to get it, and they, um, they, uh, they, you know, and we'll get to their house, and they're just lying on their couch. Seven o'clock comes, and uh, we see, then they're going to bed. They sleep, they wake up at nine, ten, they come and sit on the couch again. Why? Mm-hmm. An inheritance is there for them. And that inheritance is cursed money. It will curse their life. And you'll find out it doesn't matter how many hundreds of millions. In 10 years, it can all be gone. If an inheritance is cursed, money that you have not worked for comes to you. It will destroy you so quickly. Are you guys with me? I remember uh, someone told me, uh, Prophet Angel told me, he said, you don't, uh, people get inheritances because they don't have the ability to get the money. 
So God has to make another way to bless them. An inheritance is cursed. It's cursed money. Um, when you can sit for a whole year on a couch and have no ambition to do anything, it means there's no relationship with God. There's no creativity. And the folding of the hands, little sleep, little slumber. A little of the folding of the hands here, it's a little sleep, a little slumber. Poverty will catch up with you. Around the corner, the Bible says. Are you guys with me? A lazy person is a saboteur, the Bible says. He's a sabotage. Poverty looks for the lazy and those who don't have creativity. But those who have a relationship with God, He anoints their imagination. He sanctifies their imagination. And creativity comes out. When you spend time with God, you cannot help but be creative. Are you guys with me? You cannot help but to think of something new, to think of a new idea. So listen to this. He says, casting down vain imaginations. No. It should be casting down, as the New King James put it, vain arguments, reasonings. What is this reasonings? Reasons that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Are you guys with me? What is the knowledge of God? You will prosper. You will be blessed. You will be healthy. And some thought comes up and says, no, God's will is not for you to prosper. Uh, This prosperity gospel. No, 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 no. Cast down vain arguments, vain dialogismos, reasonings that reasons against the supernatural power or the word and the will of God. Are you guys for me? Are you guys with me? Are you guys with me? Reasoning against what the word is saying. Reasoning, what are these people doing when they getting and they Chris and they and they and they criticizing always minutes? Please understand the devil doesn't criticize or attack anything that is not successful. Are you guys with me? The devil doesn't attack anyone or anything that is not successful. The Bible says when the lion came, when David was watching over the sheep, he went for the lamb. And David went after the lion, opened his jaws, and pulled the lamb out of his mouth. But he went for the lamb, not the sheep. He went for your offspring. The devil is after your fruits. The devil comes after people which becomes fruitful, dangerous. Are you guys with me? It is only, you know, the greatest enemy is to become an enemy on the inside. Are you guys with me? So say with me, dialogismos. That is the reasonings, the arguments. It is the analytical, uh, logical, structural, reasoning side of a mind. Dianoai is imagination, but it goes a bit beyond. It is the ability to see, perceive, and to have visions, and to see a picture. Are you guys with me? This is where people get confused now. You see, you get different types of prophets. You have Nabi prophets. You have seer prophets. Uh, You have major prophets, minor prophets. You got... Uh, you got uh, north wind, east wind, south wind, west wind prophets. You've got, you, 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 you have prophets that had small messages, which is your minor prophets. Those who have, and that's just, uh, that's not a title given in scripture. That was just a title given by man by virtue of the content that they have not the legitimacy or the credibility. And, uh, you know, but when it comes to a seer, Samuel was a prophet formerly known as a seer. And it is not for me to teach now on the principles of the prophetic in that regard. But uh, a lot of people in the body of Christ has been rejected because their gift or their seer gift has not been understood or has been, um, has been making others threatened or others have become threatened by it. Are you guys with me? Others have become threatened by it. 
You see, when a prophet tells you, if I take somebody's hand and all of a sudden I can look there and I can walk there and I'm in a vision and I can choose to see that vision. I can choose even to speak it or not. And God will judge me according to that because not everything I see I must speak. Only that which God tells me to speak, I must speak. But it doesn't mean I'm not seeing anything else. Some prophets are Nabi prophets. They speak with a bubbling forth of their mouth. So they speak continually or they speak continuously under inspiration. So they just close their eyes and it comes forth in their mouth. It's a Nabi prophet. Nabi meaning bubbling forth. A seer sees all the time. Those are the ones that become psychics or this or that. And the more, uh, depending on call and so on, depending also. And when I speak of the seer gift, actually many Christians can tap into it. If they have a relationship with God, their eyes will open to perceive. Are you guys with me? One of the Bible says that Jesus said in, uh, we preached it last week Sunday morning, that those who do not discern and recognize the, see the signs of the times, that does not recognize my visitation, I will hide this from their eyes. I will constrain it and blind them, meaning I will shut visions from them. Meaning not having spiritual perception is a curse. Are you guys with me? So you have this thing. Remember, I always say, if apostles are in the spirit, they are great. They're apostles. But if they are in the flesh, apostles become controlling. If prophets are in the flesh, they become judgmental. If evangelists are in the flesh, uh, if evangelists on the flesh, they, come, they become con, uh, condemning. If teachers or if pastors are in the flesh, they become people pleasing and insecure. If teachers are in the flesh, they become critical. So, these are the things that manifest when the fivefold gifting moves into the flesh. And we have seen it all over in the body of Christ. So for example, if I stand as a prophet and I say I'm doing this and that, I cannot, it is against scripture for a teacher to judge me on my experience. There must be a prophet that judge me. And when the Bible says let two or three prophets judge, it doesn't mean judge the prophet, it means judge the prophecy. Are you guys with me? So, you cannot let a math teacher examine or put to the test a science teacher. You cannot do it. It's out of their grace. It's out of their, out of their, uh, their realm, their sphere of influence. Out of their grace. They will judge. They won't understand. When the disciples saw Jesus walk in the water, they screamed ghost. Because it was a realm of the supernatural that went outside of their comfort zone. And what they have known, they've seen him he raise the dead. They've seen him heal the sick. They've seen him done many miracles, but they haven't seen him walk in the water. The moment he did that, they screamed witchcraft. When people scream witchcraft to believers, you must know real power is operating there now. When people are screaming and they're saying that church is operating witchcraft, you must know there's a power there that they cannot explain. The only thing they can put and connect it to is to say it's witchcraft. Are you guys with me? Even Moses thought that the burning bush was witchcraft. He was born and raised in the dark arts. That when you walk past the bush, he saw a man standing in the middle of the bush. And as the man was standing in the middle of the bush, the Bible says that the bush was burning, but it was not burning. That means the man was burning, but the man was not burning. And he saw the angel of the Lord, but he saw a man standing there in the bush. And he thought, this is witchcraft. And he tried to walk away. And then something in him make it, made him discern. To say, look, turn around and look a bit deeper in the situation. You will not always know immediately if it is God. God has to be discerned. 
Are you guys with me? He has to be discerned. You have to have the Spirit of God to say, but wait, is this miracle that has happened, or is this of God or not? Are you guys with me? So say with me, Dio Nai, and say Diologismos. These are the two sides of the word mind in Scripture. Imagination and reasoning. Are you guys with me? So in reasoning, there's a good Diologismos doesn't always mean bad. Paul, the Bible says in Paul, uh, with Paul, I think it is in Acts 18, that he reasoned every day at the school of Tyrannus. He reasoned the scriptures, proving that Jesus is the Christ. He reasoned every day. So there's a place for reasoning. But there's also a place for imagination. And do you and I, are you guys with me? Uh, uh, uh. You know, people think prophecy works like this. They think the Lord must just come and speak to you. It starts with imagination. The training of a prophet. Many prophets, many people don't believe in schools of the prophets and so on. And unfortunately, they are in error. Because prophets has to be trained. They have to. Otherwise, they make mistakes and all those things. And you have to be trained. What did God do with Jeremiah? I'm sure if there was another prophet to train Jeremiah, they would have trained, but there wasn't. So God had to train Jeremiah. So what did he say to Jeremiah? He says, what do you see? He didn't say, do you see uh, the branch I'm trying to show you? He said, what do you see? Meaning, close your eyes, Jeremiah. Tell me, what are you seeing? There's prophetic training there. But we take that and we throw it away. Are you guys with me? Imagine that your imagination can be the voice of God and you don't know it. Jeremiah could have been there and closed his eyes and see all these things and never knew it was God. Until God said, no, 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 just close your eyes. Tell me, what are you seeing? The first thing you're seeing, Jeremiah, uh, I see the branch of an almond tree. Excellent. Now what you're seeing, you're seeing this branch, but actually it means this. Now tell me another thing that you're seeing. And now I'm seeing a pot. A boiling pot that's happening with this and it's being tipped over. He says, that's great because this is judgment coming upon this nation. Do not regard or, or throw out your imagination. Your imagination is one of the most powerful tools that God can use to speak to you. Are you guys with me? And I'm going to get to the point. Where people are saying, oh, but Leon, you know, you speak of astral traveling and this and that and blah, 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 blah. Uh, you know, Paul said something at the, I think it was at Moss Hill. He said, to the God, to the unknown God. And he preached a message and he used the phrase of the unknown God. But he was speaking to a bunch of people that was full of witchcraft. And he had to use the terminology. Are you guys with me? God is not bothered about terminology. And he is not limited by your terminology either. Don't think, oh, somebody said, I saw traveling. Now God is not limited by your, God knows exactly who means what. When I was answering that question, it was in relation to somebody asking about that, that knew that experience. That is it. Uh, in scripture, what is it called? Transporting. Uh, secondly, what is it called? Imagination. When we get into a prophetic institute. How do you know if you close your eyes and you see New York, how do you know you're not there? Now please, let's not, uh, let's not say, oh, this is getting weird. I'll prove you out of scripture. Are you guys with me? And then you have a thing called uh, spiritual substance. And the greater the light in you. the more real it will be. Light is phenomenal. Um, That is a teaching that I don't want to get into now on a public platform because obviously we are being scrutinized by some people that think it is needed. Uh, uh, You know. If your vision is so, if if your vision is only to bring down the vision of another man, you are a very small person. A very small person. 
So imagination. You see, the gift given to, when it comes to prophets, as believers, your imagination needs to be sanctified and trained and so on. And what do you do when you pray? You imagine. Let's just really get over it. Are you guys with me? You close your eyes, you pray, and you imagine. If you don't, you're dead and you need to wake up. But you imagine the thing that you're praying for. When you are imagining, you're giving birth to something. Are you guys with me? And you'll see how God judges that more than real life. So he says, Jeremiah, what do you see? Jeremiah closed his eyes and he said, uh, the first, if Jeremiah would have said, I see a bird, God would have prophesied, I said to him, this is what I'm doing in relation to a bird. This is what the word of the Lord means. God didn't want him to see a branch. God wanted him to see whatever he could see. I hope people, I, I don't know if people get that. God didn't show him a branch. God said, what do you see, Jeremiah? If Jeremiah said, I saw a bird. God would have said, you've seen well. Because like a bird, I'm going to do one, two, three. Prophecy is confusing. Don't think you know how to do it. It's amazing. You'll never see prophets, rarely see prophets attacking other prophets. Are you guys with me? Uh, so our imagination is our visual part. Like Jeremiah saw the branch of an almond tree. It was his imagination that was used in the prophetic. But he was getting deliverance of the mind. My goal this evening is to bring deliverance of the mind. So that prosperity can be your portion. That creativity can come back into your life. Are you guys with me? What do I do when I prophesy over somebody? My imagination is first of all activated. Yes, there are over a hundred ways that God speaks. There are many ways that God speaks. But if I walk to somebody to prophesy over them in my mind, in my imagination, I'm already imagining their life. It just happens to be by the Spirit of God. And it happens to be correct. But you cannot remove imagination. And Christians have thrown away their imagination, lost their creativity, and they've become irrelevant in a world that needed them the most and their relevancy the most. Are you guys with me? Go through to Genesis chapter number 6, verse 5. Listen to this. Genesis 6, verse 5. Then the Lord saw... That the wickedness of man, listen to this, was great in the earth. And that every intent, say with me intent, of the thoughts of his heart was only evil. I put in the King James for me. Let's see what it says there. Listen to this. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every Imagine, say with me, imagination. And the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Now the equivalent for Dionai. Dionai and the Greeks equivalent in the Hebrews we call Yetzer. Are you guys with me? Yetzer, imagination. So if we wanted to put this and uh, use the Septuagint to however you wanted to use it to translate this uh, verse, it would have gone like this and that every mind of the thoughts of his heart it doesn't sound right so it is that every yet sir of the thoughts of his heart was only evil so God is saying yeah I think this was uh, this was uh, 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 this was just before the flood it was by Tower of Babel Tower of Babel where it, God looked upon the earth and he saw that the imagination, not the acts. Are you guys with me? He saw that the imagination of the thoughts of the heart was evil. No. So God looked at the imagination. He judged them according to the imagination. Go with me to, let me just get it here. Zerunum, 
What is this? Verse 5. Go with me to... No, 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 no. It's not here. No, that's not the Tower of Babel. I wanted to say. That's the flood. Go with me to Genesis 11. Mm, Genesis 11. So sorry, I didn't mean the Tower of Babel. That was the flood that I'm speaking about there. I'm speaking. I want to get to... Uh, get to uh, Genesis 11 let's go to verse 6 Genesis 11 verse 6 King James listen to this and the Lord said behold the people is one say with me one and they have all one language and this they begin to do and now nothing will be restrained nothing will be withheld from them say with me nothing he says they will attain and have and achieve everything their hearts desire nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined say with me imagined to do God is saying every imagination in their hearts everything they have imagined will come into existence there's a key that they have tapped into a secret that they have unlocked that every imagination every yet sir in their heart has the ability to come into manifestation and come into fullness are you guys with me? That is how powerful imagination is. That imagination could build a tower going into heaven. Now when we speak on the Nephilim, that's a whole nother thing. And we speak about the technology they had in those days. And we speak how they received that technology. That's not for now. That is for our global school of ministry. So with the deal now. So we can see in Genesis 6 verse 5 that the imaginations of their heart were evil. Go with me to Isaiah 26 verse 3. This is where I want to get. You see, that means that the imaginations of their heart was evil. The phrase in Genesis 6 verse 5 is a Hebraic picture of it being a solid form, yet spiritual still. So I want you to understand this. He's speaking of a yet being a solid form because God can now judge them on it. You see, a thought is not an imagination. And an imagination is not a thought. Because a thought is a temptation. But even Jesus was tempted in all ways. Yet he did not sin. So if a thought was an imagination, that means an imagination is judged because it's a solid form. That means a thought is judged because it's a solid thought, uh, form. And that means it's a temptation is judged. And that means that Jesus had to be judged. Or Jesus was sinning. Are you guys with me? What is temptation? Temptation is a thought in your mind that tells you to do something, but it is not you. It is you being in a crowd and somebody is swearing around you. You hear it, but you don't partake and you don't entertain. That is what temptation is. Are you guys with me? So listen to this. Isaiah 26 verse 3. I want us to get into Yetzer a bit more. Listen to this. So Yetzer, say with me, imagination you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind so with him mind is stayed on you the word mind there yet sir so with me yet sir so he's saying whose yet sir is focused on you him you will keep in perfect peace that means as you're sitting and your imagination is continually upon God not upon COVID, not upon the lockdown, not upon what's going to happen in South Africa. But your mind, your yet, sir, is focused upon God. Perfect peace will be your portion. Are you guys with me? Are you guys with me? Stay with me, yet, sir. So listen, listen, listen. Meaning that the mind here is the same as imagination, is the same as intent. So God looks at imagination as somebody's intent.
But it goes a little bit further. Go with me to, uh, go with me to Psalm chapter number 103 verse 14. Psalm 103 verse 14. Mm. Because you'll see that the translators are struggling a lot in relation to the term Yetzer. Because it is used interchangeably to imagination and then to a solid form in the spiritual realm, but also to a material form. Now listen to this. Psalm 103 verse 14. He says, For He knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. Say with me, frame. The word frame, yet sir. God knows our yet sir. But now it is used in a, in, a, in, a, in a sentence that He knows our physical form. So God is using the same words for our physical form as it is as imagination. Are you guys with me? So this means that our imagination is the same as a physical form and frame before God. Are you guys with me? It is something solid, something tangible, something that can be touched. That means if I imagine that I will have a six bedroom house, that I'll have this car or I'll have this business, I'll have this ministry. If it begins as a thought, that is still okay. But then it moves into a realm of yet sir. That means my focus must be on it. What does God say? You who keep your mind on me, I will keep him in perfect peace. You who keep your yet sir on me, meaning the more you focus on that imagination, it begins to materialize in a material form, into a physical solid form. Are you guys with me? Yes, this is the book secret. It came from the Bible. All, most, if not all, of your practices in Illuminati, I'm not speaking of sacrifice and all these things, I'm speaking of spiritual laws, spiritual secrets, comes from Scripture. Are you guys with me? These are things that God gave even to Jacob when his father-in-law Laban tried to do him in with business. And then Jacob had an imagination and wisdom and he received a spiritual intelligence, a sagacity that said to him, the place where the animals are drinking, put a pole in the water a stick, a reed, a rod, and put stripes on it because him and his father-in-law made a deal with spotted and non-spotted and so many wages and etc. And he says, put a pole with, with stripes because the place where, the, where, where they come, where the animals come and drink and the place where they mate, where they breed, all they will do whenever they drink, what did the 300 men with Gideon do? They sat in the water and those who lapped it up like a dog were chosen because they continually kept their eyes on the target while feeding themselves. They did not take their eyes off. Are you guys with me? That is why a prophet is always irritated if somebody is not focused or attentive. They are in a dream world. A prophet prophets works with the hearts of people. They can feel so as Gideon's people were drinking, so you see the animals here drinking. And while they were drinking, they looked at this rod that was striped. So what happened? Their mind was stayed upon an imagination. Are you guys with me? They kept their yet, sir, upon a physical thing that was there. And because their eyes saw in the physical, it began to be formed in the spiritual. And they gave birth of to the thing that they see. That means that which your eyes is focused upon. God is saying, focus your yetzer, put your yetzer upon me and you will have perfect peace. Meaning keep your eyes upon me. Don't keep your eyes upon the news. Don't keep your eyes upon CNN or what the government is saying. Keep your eyes upon me. Keep your imagination, your yet sir, upon me. Because it is just a matter of time before you'll be giving birth to that which your eyes are beholding. Meaning, what are you putting in your heart? What are you putting in your mind? What are you focusing your eyes on continually? Are you guys with me? 
This is the law that the book and the movie and everything the secret used. And yet they bore results. And Christians say, no, this is from the devil. Yes, of course, secret. No, don't. That is, that is extra biblical stuff. And it has got uh, Freemasonry and so on. Don't, don't read that stuff. Please don't. And we have never endorsed it. Uh, I've actually never even read the, read the book. But the devil can do nothing out of his own except taking something from God, pervert it and twist it. This is a secret. I remember it was about three weeks ago or so, and I thought something that happened to me and something that good things that happened and so on, I realized. But this is what I spoke continually, like many years ago. And that was on my mind. It was in the screen of my, of my Dionai. It was the image and the perception, the picture that I saw. And it became a reality. I gave birth. To the point of even having exactly to what I imagined. And I realized my only limitation is my lack of imagination. My only limitation then is my lack of imagination and the words that I speak. Are you guys with me? What are your imagination? How big is your imagination? And do you have the ability to keep it so focused? To keep your yet so focused on God? Are you guys with me? Let's go to Habakkuk 2 verse 18. Listen to this. So what is your yet said? It is the part that sees an image. And it is also this word that sees and forms and shapes that image. It gives frame and form. So what you imagine and what you think in your mind is what will be your reality, your today. Are you guys with me? So stop thinking about poverty. Just sit and think, I'll be rich one day. And for all your critics, it doesn't matter because they'll be poor one day. You don't even have to worry about them. This is your life. One thing I realized, if you worry what people say, if you live by the approval of man, you'll die by their rejection. I saw a curse upon the earth and thing that many men and women go into. They worry so much what other people say that even when they're 50 years old, they still would do and their families and everything about their own life is gone, lacking, missing. Because all they worried about is what some one person will say. God is going to judge you for your own life. Are you guys with me? I don't ever apologize for being blessed. I'm not the one who's blessing me. God is the one who's blessing us, not me. Why must I apologize? And, uh, you know, somebody said to me, they said, it's amazing. Any person that's successful or wealthy has always one thing, a lawyer. Isn't it amazing? You watch these movies. Anybody that's successful has a lawyer. And you're wondering, but I don't have a lawyer. Why do these people have a lawyer? And you realize that once just a little bit of money comes into you, people become deceptive. People become criminals. And that's why you just, you just need a lawyer. Hebrew, Habakkuk chapter number 2 verse 18. Because people for some reason think you owe them something. What profit, listen to this, what profit is the image, say with me the image, that its maker should carve it to the, carve it the molded image, a teacher of lies that the maker of its mold should trust in it to mute idols. He's speaking about those who are building physical idols. Are you guys with me? shaping it, forming it, and molding it, and then trust, putting their trust in that physical idol. The only thing is that word mold is the word yet, sir. So he's saying, you worship this image in your mind as a God, and it is a reality, and that reality and physical form is called yet, sir. This means that God judges imagination as if it is a reality. Your imagination is a blueprint of your life. The, if you can tell me your imagination, I'll tell you where you will be in 10 years time. If you can tell me which your yet sir is focused upon daily, I'll tell you where you will be in 10 years time. Are you guys with me? 
Meaning if Jesus can judge you and say that those who even look upon a woman with, with adultery in his heart, with lust in his heart, is as if he's committed adultery. But hold on. What is the heart there? Say with you, Dionaya. Imagination. If I can just imagine of lust, it is as if I'm committing the act. And now the scripture that says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a man imagines within himself, that is how the enemy sees him on the outside. That is how he will be and he will be manifested to others. Are you guys with me? Meaning Joshua and Caleb, Joshua and Caleb went into the promised land. And they said these words. They said, we saw the enemy as grasshoppers in our sight. And we are like giants in theirs. But yet the other says that the enemy was like giants in our sight. And we were like grasshoppers in theirs. It is a matter of perception. Are you guys with me? Say with me imagination. Say Dionaya. The Bible says in Hebrews. I think it is in, uh, I think it is in, uh, uh, put off in Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12 verse 1. Listen to this. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud, so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let's run this race with endurance. Next verse. Looking unto Jesus. So they're looking unto Jesus. Setting our yet set upon him. The author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. Are you guys with me? Meaning there was a joy that was beyond the cross for him that he imagined in his mind. What did he imagine? He saw you preaching. Are you guys with me? He saw you and I getting saved. And he said, but this is the joy that is pushing me beyond the pain and the suffering of the cross. Go through to Genesis 1 verse 1. Genesis 1 verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Next verse. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the deep face of the deep. Now listen to this. And the Spirit of God, so with you, was hovering over the waters. The word hovering means this. To be in constant, uh, or say, let me say it like this. It is a fluttering of a constant imagination for a positive outcome. It is a fluttering, like a mother hen broods over her eggs, of a constant imagination for a positive outcome. Meaning that the Holy Ghost sat upon the waters of the deep, hovering over it, but there was an imagination that began to happen. And he thought of you, meaning that you come from a thought of God. And as God was thinking, it became words. And as the words became, it became a creation. But where did it start? Say with me, yet sir. Meaning that you can change your life through this key. You can have deliverance of your mind through this key of yet sir. Are you guys with me? Let your mind become creative and full of prosperity. And let poverty be removed. Your bank account is as much as your imagination is and the words of your mouth is. Yes. 